Welcome. Last classes, we talked about business cycles, expansions, financial crises, and pandemics. There was a lot of different phenomena interacting with each other that inspire researchers around the world in their work. For us to start getting in the mindset of modern macroeconomists, we will describe and build an equilibrium business cycle model that is at the core of virtually all modern macroeconomic models. Most elements that we are going to look already exist in the solo model framework, like a constant returns to scale production function in labor and capital and competitive factor markets. Actually, the best way to describe this new model framework is to think of the solo model, but now with an endogenous savings rate, but more on that later. We will assume households perform all the functions in the economy. Each household runs a family business and uses labor and capital to produce goods through the same production function as we had before. There will be four markets. The market for goods, capital, labor, and money. We assume that the exchanges on each of these markets use a single form of medium of exchange. A medium of exchange is an object held not for its own sake, but rather to trade fairly soon for something else, such as goods and services. We call the medium of exchange in our model money. Assume that money is just a piece of paper, analogous to a paper currency issued by a government. Money is denominated in an arbitrary unit, such as the dollar. Dollar amounts are in nominal terms, and paper money earns no interest. Assume for now that this aggregate quantity of money is a given constant. The sum of all individual holdings of money is constant and equals the aggregate quantity of money in the economy. Households sell all the goods they produce on a goods market. Then, households buy back from this market the goods that they want. The price in this market, P, expresses the number of dollars that exchange per unit of goods. We call P the price level. Household buys goods for consumption and to increase the stock of goods in the form of capital, called investment. Since all of these goods are sold in the goods market, the variable Y will also represent the quantity of goods per year sold and bought on the goods market. The quantity P times Y is the dollar value per year of the goods bought and sold on the goods market. Since P dollars buy one unit of goods, one dollar buys one over P units of goods. The expression one over P is the value of one dollar in terms of the goods that it buys. As a consequence, M dollars exchange for M over P number of goods. An expression like M over P is in real terms, in units of goods, whereas a quantity like M is in dollar or nominal terms. Households buy as business owners and sell as individuals, labor in the labor market at the dollar or nominal wage rate W. Assume, for now, that the quantity supplied LS is a constant. The real wage rate is the nominal wage W divided by the price level P. Each household rents out all of the capital that it owns on a rental market. We think of the capital offered on the rental market as the supply of capital services KS. Since we have assumed that each household rents out all of its capital, we have that the supply of capital services is equal to some constant K. Households rent out capital for dollars at the, role, at the dollar or nominal rental price R. A household that rents the amount of capital KD pays the nominal amount R times KD per year and get, gets to use the capital as an input to production. The real rental price is R over P, and capital depreciates at rate delta, so that the net return is given by R over P minus delta. A borrowing household receives a loan from another household, whereas a lending household provides a loan to another household. A household that makes a loan, the principal, receives a piece of paper called a bond, and we call the market on which households borrow or lend the bond market. The holder of a bond, the lender, has a claim to the amount, the principal, owed by the borrower. Each unit of the bonds commits the borrower to pay the holder a flow of interest payments of I dollars per year. Here, 
assume all bonds have a one-year maturity and commit the borrower to repay one dollar to the holder of the bond. The variable I is the interest rate, which is the ratio of the interest rate payment, I dollars, to the principal, one dollar, and can vary over time. All these markets were present already in the background of the solo model, but we did not explicitly mention them. To move forward, we will endogenize the savings rate. Remember that in the solo model, the savings rate is some exogenous variable. But in order to explain the savings rate within the model, we need a theory of savings, or if you want, consumer behavior. 